All right, so in this video, I'm going to do a couple examples of inverse functions and also talk about the domain and range of both the function and the inverse. So we're going to start with this x squared plus 3, where x is greater than or equal to 0. This restriction of the domain just takes this function that was a parabola, and it really cuts it in half. And you can see this x um, greater than or equal to 0 was really that vertex of the parabola and it gets rid of this piece that way we've created a one-to-one -one function so that's necessary for it to be stated so we kind of already know the domain of f here x is greater than or equal to zero so that's kind of a good hint that's already given away okay so let's go ahead and talk about the inverse and then we'll come back to the domain and range so f inverse fx when we're trying to figure it out remember we have four steps so step number one is to write y equals, and that would be x squared plus 3. Step 2 says go ahead and switch the x and the y. So now I have x equals y squared plus 3. And then step 3, which is the bigger step, says solve for y. So I need to bring the 3 over. There's x minus 3 is y squared. And then I'm going to take the square root of x minus 3. That gives me y. And I should feel like I've just done exactly the opposite things. It used to say plus 3. Now it says minus 3. It used to say square. Now it says square root. That finishes it. f inverse is the square root of x minus 3. So now when we go to start talking about domain and range, um, from the beginning, we knew the domain of f. Right? So let's write it over here. So f, the domain, was 0 to infinity. That was given. Okay. Let's look at f inverse of x, the domain. I can see this is the square root of x minus 3. So because x minus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0, x is going to be have to be greater than or equal to 3. So there's 3 to infinity. The best part is how they switch. The domain of f equals the range of f inverse. And the domain of f inverse is the range of f. So it's kind of like we got a BOGO. We got a little two for one here. So once I know the domain of f, I can write that in as the range of f inverse. And now I know the domain of f inverse, so that's my range of f. This is exactly how I want to come at it. I don't want to have to think about range. Range is kind of usually the harder of the two, so if I can grab both of the answers from the domain, it's going to be a lot easier. So let's try again. Here's a different function. It says 5 over x plus 4, and again, we're going to find the inverse. Let's go ahead and write a little note here for f. I know the domain is x cannot be negative 4, right? I can't put negative 4 in because that would give me 0 in the denominator. So let's look at f inverse when I say domain and range. I'm going to come back and use that 4 later, but not yet. Okay. So let's start by just going to let's find the inverse function. So step 1 says we're going to write y equals 5 over x plus 4. Step two says we're going to switch x and y, so now x is 5 over y plus 4. Step three says solve for y, so this one's a little bit harder, but not terrible. I need to bring this y out of the denominator. Um, if you like cross multiply, that works. So I would have y plus 4 times x is 5, so I just went across. Okay, the deal is I need to solve for y, right? Solving for y every time. So let's distribute. I have xy plus 4x equals 5. I'm trying to get y by itself, so let's move the 4x over. So xy is negative 4x plus 5. Last step, let's divide by x on both sides. So y is negative 4x plus 5 over x. Now these, when they're rationals, don't have that same good feel of I did the opposite. You kind of can get a little lost in it. So just follow the steps. This is now f inverse of x. It says negative 4x plus 5 over x. 
when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at F inverse, and I say, oh, what value can X not be? Well, I have X in the denominator, so that says X cannot be zero. I needed a cross out there. So the domain of F, I couldn't have negative four. The domain of F inverse, I can't have zero. So the range of F will be, um, I won't have zero. And let's go ahead and write that as a Y. So I'm going to say y will not be 0. And when I look at the range of f inverse, y is never going to be negative 4. Again, you should see negative 4, 0, 0, negative 4. They're completely backwards, opposite of each other. Let's try one more, a little bit bigger. I have 4x plus 11 divided by 9x plus 3. And we're going to find the inverse, then talk about the domain and the range of each of the functions, um, both f of x and the inverse. Okay, um, we can start by talking a little bit about the domain of f. So when I look at 9x plus 3 in the denominator, if I set it equal to 0, 9x is negative 3, x is negative 3 over 9, which is negative 1 third. So to start with f, I have a domain that x will not be negative 1 over 3. Now let's work on getting the um, f inverse. So step number one, y equals 4x plus 11 over 9x plus 3. Step two, x equals 4y plus 11 over 9y plus 3. Now what's interesting about this one is y is here twice. So that's really important that we pay attention to that when we go to solve. So step three, there's the big one. Um, again, we could go back and kind of do a cross multiplication. I have 9y plus 3 times x equals 4y plus 11 times 1. That's the same thing. So I have 9xy plus 3x equals 4y plus 11. Keep pushing for that idea that we're trying to solve for y. So I want to gather all the y's together and then everything else can go to the other side. So you can see I took the 4y, I moved it to the left, so I both have both y's on the left. The 3x came to the right, now I have negative 3x plus 11. Key step here is they both have a y, and I need to factor that out. So I take the y out, I have 9x minus 4. I still have negative 3x plus 11 on the right. To get y alone, I'm going to divide. So I have negative 3x plus 11 divided by 9x minus 4. This is what we were looking for. This is the inverse function. So that's the big important step that if the function starts with two x's, it's going to have two y's when I switch them. You're going to have to solve for y, which means you'll have to factor it out at some point. Only factor the y. If they had something else in common, don't take it out. Only take out the y. All right. Now I'm looking at this 9x minus 4, and I'm going to set it equal to 0 so I can talk about the domain of f inverse. That says 9x equals 4. x is 4 over 9. So I know now I don't want to have 4 over 9 in my domain. So down here for f inverse of x, the domain I want to say x is not 4 over 9, which says, well, the range of f, y will not be 4 over 9, because these will always match. And then the range of f inverse, we go back to the domain, and it says x won't be negative 1 over 3.